Chapter 1, Introduction to Pathophysiology. In this chapter, we will talk about uh, pathophysiology, uh, what it is, define it. Uh, we'll discuss health and disease, and then conclude with disease distribution. So what is pathophysiology? Well, normal physiology is a course that you had to take. It was a prerequisite for this class. And in, patho in uh, physiology, you learned about the functions of the human body in a normal state. Pathophysiology is going to be similar, except instead of learning about how the body functions when everything is normal, we are going to learn how it functions when it is diseased. Now, some concepts that are interrelated with pathophysiology includes etiology, pathogenesis, clinical manifestations, and treatment implications. So what is etiology? Etiology is the study of the cause or reason for a particular disease or injury. So basically, what caused it? Now, some classifications include a disease's etiology being idiopathic. That just means we don't know. Uh, we still don't know. More research needs to be done. And then we have iatrogenic. Iatrogenic is also known as physician-caused. So the cause is going to be related to the unintended or unwanted consequences due to your doctor giving you some sort of treatment. So kind of like the side effects. Now, another concept I want to briefly mention are risk factors. So risk factors are basically factors that increase the likelihood of a disease. It doesn't mean you are going to get the disease, get the disease for sure. It just means the greater the number of risk factors you have, the greater the likelihood the disease is going to manifest. Then we have pathogenesis. So pathogenesis is the development of the disease, the evolution of the disease. So from the initial stimulus to the ultimate expression of the manifestations of the disease, what were the steps that led to it uh, developing and occurring? Then we have clinical manifestations. So manifestations includes signs and symptoms. So signs are the objective objective or observed manifestations of the disease, whereas symptoms are subjective feelings of abnormality. So if you feel like you have a headache and you feel lethargic, those would all be symptoms. If you have a bruise, um, that would be a sign. We also have different stages and clinical courses. So the latent period is the time from initial exposure to exposure to the injurious agent to when you first start to see signs and symptoms. So that period in which you don't really see anything going on yet, but um, the injury is actually starting to occur inside your body. Then we have the prodromal period. This is when you're going to first start to see the signs and symptoms. Um, so think about when you feel sick. So as soon as you start to feel sick, like you start to feel like you have a headache, you feel lethargic, you're already in the prodromal stage the latent period is actually already passed. Then you have the acute phase. This is when the disease is gonna reach its full intensity. So this is when you're kind of stuck in bed, you're really tired and you feel at your worst. Now, we can also um, look at other kind of uh, categories. We have acute clinical course. So that just means that um, it's the, the disease course is gonna be acute or short-lived. So it doesn't last very long. And you may have very severe manifestations, but it's at a shorter, um, it's gonna have a shorter lifespan. Chronic clinical course can be chronic. It's gonna last much longer. So it can last months or even years. And sometimes it'll actually follow an acute course. When we say a disease has exacerbated, it means it's gotten worse in severity uh, versus remission is when the severity has decreased. And it may indicate that you're starting to get better and the disease is getting cured. And convalescence is the stage of recovery after a disease or illness or surgical procedure. So, quick question. Which of the following is an example of the clinical manifestation known as a sign? So, nausea, bruise, headache, loss of appetite. Which would be the best example of a sign? And remember, a sign is um, objective, not subjective. So, the best answer would be a bruise. So let's move on to treatment implications. So understanding the etiology, the cause, the pathogenesis, the course of development, and clinical consequences of a particular disease may determine which treatment could be most helpful. So it's important to understand how the disease 
uh, what caused the disease and how it developed to try to figure out the best course of treatment. So you don't want to just deal with the signs and symptoms all the time. You want to look at what is the underlying cause. And so when you get rid of that cause, then a lot of the times the signs and symptoms will go away. So you're not just putting a Band-Aid on. All right, so concepts of normality in health and disease. There are individual factors that will determine um, concepts of health and disease. So those individual factors include things like cultural consideration. So each culture defines health and illness in a manner that reflects their experience. There's also age-related differences. So for example, a normal value at one age may not be normal at another age. So normal values in an infant versus um, someone in the prime of their age versus the elderly population, normal values will change and you have to be aware of that. There are also gender differences. So normal values in men um, may be different than in women. Um, other factors include situational differences. This is uh, looking at um, are, you, are we adapting to some abnormal situation and that's why we have these signs and symptoms or that's why certain things are manifesting. So take a look at the overall story and not just looking at um, values. And then time variation. So this may impact how the body responds from day to night. So we know about circadian rhythm and how our body has an internal clock. Um, so these are things that we have to be aware of as well. So factors affecting patterns of disease distribution. So let's take a look at concepts of epidemiology. So epidemiology is the study of the patterns of disease involving a population, examining the occurrence of the disease, incidence, prevalence, how it's transmitted, and how it's distributed. Um, the best example I think of epidemiology is to look at what happened with the Zika virus not too long ago. So um, we had to have epidemiologists come and study how the disease initially started and how it was spreading from person to person to be able to then combat and make sure that it doesn't continue to spread and what the best course of treatment would be. Um, so we can talk about types of disease. We have endemic, epidemic, and pandemic. So when a disease that is at its endemic stage, that means it's native to a local region. Once it's spread to many people, once it's starting to spread to many people at the same time, then we have an epidemic. And then if it starts to spread to large geographic areas, that's when we get into a pandemic. And there are also factors that affect patterns of disease. So again, age can play a role, ethnic group, gender, socioeconomic factor, lifestyle, geographic location. These are all factors that can influence how a disease spreads. Um, now, how, how do we prevent disease from being um, from spreading um, and becoming a pandemic? Well, there are different levels of prevention. We have primary, secondary, and tertiary. So the primary level of prevention is where you're going to try to alter your susceptibility of getting that disease, reduce your exposure um, for, suscept for susceptible people. So um, getting an immunization, getting your flu shot is going to decrease your susceptibility of getting the flu that season. It doesn't mean it's, you're not going to get it at all, but your risk is going to be much lower. Then we have the secondary level of prevention. In secondary level of prevention, this actually includes early detection. So screening would be a great example because the when you screen for something, you're trying to detect it at its earliest stage so that you can address it. Um, also, management of the disease is under secondary. And then tertiary is where you are doing rehabilitation, supportive care, reducing the disability associated with the disease, trying to restore function. So Mr. BK is a 53-year-old man being seen in the primary care clinic. He tells you he went to a health fair and he was told he had elevated blood glucose or blood sugar. Um, at his last visit, it was also elevated, and you find out his brother and mother have type 2 diabetes. When looking at the level of prevention, which level would the health fair fall under? So here he um, is getting, let's see, he's getting screened. So the best answer would be secondary. Which of the following is an example of primary prevention then? So your options include maintaining routine immunizations, screening for cancer, 
rehabilitating after a stroke and performing monthly breast exams. And the best answer here would be immunizations because here you are altering your susceptibility. Okay, so that is chapter one. Thank you.